So I am going to kick it over to Tim Blakesley, who's going to kick us off today. Tim. Thank you, Carrie. Um, I am Tim Blakesley. I'm the Assistant Dean with the Marshall School of Business Office, Office of Executive Education. And I just want to thank you for joining us. You know, I suspect, like me, you have been inundated with invitations to webinars such as these. So I'm pleased that you thought there would be value in it for attending this web webinar with us. With that, it's going to be my pleasure to introduce our key presenter today, Ken Perlman, adjunct professor of management and organization with the Marshall School of Business. Professor, professor Perlman is a consultant, facilitator, and presenter with over 25 years experience consulting to executives and teams at Fortune 500 companies. Ken is also one of our core exec ed faculty members teaching our leadership development for building high performing teams class. Ken has built his expertise in leadership, change, program management, culture, organization design, communication, and innovation. Some of Ken's clients include Levi Strauss, Warner Brothers, Kaiser Permente, NetApp, Nordstrom's, California Edison, and Nestle. It's my privilege to have Ken join us to explore today's topic of maximizing remote work. Ken is joined today by colleagues from CultureSync, an organization he co-founded. So with that, Ken, I turn it over to you. Uh, thanks, it's, it's great to be here. And I am joined um, by, by both communities in which I play. Um, so we have the executive ed team from USC Marshall, and then um, my colleagues from CultureSync uh, who uh, will be chiming in throughout the day. So Carrie Kish, our CEO, Hart Logan, Jack Bennett, our founding Andrew. partners, um, Carolina Morgan and uh, and Lindsay Kresh. So we'll we'll all be blending in the best of what we've got, which is really good research, but tied in and most uh, most directly brought to you uh, through a combination of practical tactical um, techniques and more importantly, learning from the things you are already doing. So this is going to be highly interactive. It's going to be highly participatory. Um, and really fast paced. So if there's a topic that you don't like, wait about four minutes because we'll be on to something else. Um, so we won't be dwelling on, on a whole lot of, uh, of anything. Um, but it's a pleasure to be here. We do want this to be interactive. Um, and with as, as many people as we have and many friends we recognize, good to see you. Um, please feel free to use the chat. We will be monitoring that actively. Uh, there will be times we'll be actually actually opening up the microphone. So, with that, I want to I want to turn it over. Actually, hang on. Before I turn it over to an initial poll, I want to give this a, a little bit of context. Um, we're kind of in somewhere between weeks one and three of physical distancing and working from home. And the good news is it takes about three weeks to make a habit. So the first week was probably a little bit chaotic. If you're into the second week, things are more routine and now you're dealing with exceptions. And if you're into the third week, it's now kind of into a little bit of a flow. Um, just know if you've had changes in schedules like kids going on spring break or off of spring break or um, any type of shift, it resets that clock. So um, just give yourself some patience to not get it right, right away and know that things are getting better. Also know that this is step one in our transition to working from home and working remotely and being physically distanced. Um, and this is sort of the foundation because what we see is the trends that are coming is it won't be the physical move. It won't be the technology. It won't be that stuff that we're going to talk a little bit about today, but it's going to be that our colleagues and coworkers are going to start to feel the stress in their, in their networks. So um, I have students who have um, their partners and spouses have lost jobs. Their, um, their current job, where they're, if they're in the part-time program, their current job stress is increasing. We're starting to hear about friends and colleagues who have been testing positive for COVID. We are starting to hear of people who've started to lose people um, because of this and know that that if you follow the curve here in California, um, we're going to start to see more of that. So this is foundational. As we move to the next in our series and the other things that we're building, we're going to be dealing with more and more complicated, more and more sophisticated, more and more um, um, 
next level type intervention. So this is the foundation, getting yourself ready, getting your infrastructure ready um, to be individually productive. More will come as we try to stay ahead of our curves here. So with that. Excellent. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Ken. So um, you're looking at our agenda. Ken's done a great job of setting us up. And, um, and we've got a very active chat. So great work. Um, folks are um, telling us about their coworkers. I had to um, post in Slack uh, one day this week that my new puppy, my, my, my new puppy, my coworker peed on the carpet. Um, <laughs> that was not super exciting. <laughs> um, so we're all co-working in different spaces and, um, and in different ways. We're going to launch a poll right now to um, learn what's your experience of working from home at this time. So there's an experience um, that you're having, and you can also talk about that in the chat. Um, maybe you've had to make some changes. Um, you know, maybe you've made some changes. I know for us, our team, and the reason we have our whole team here, or you know, some large um, representation from our team here, is um, we have been working from home and co-working from a distance um, for 20 years. We're really good at it. We have an expertise at it, and we help our clients with distributed work. We know the best practices, and we know that you know some of the best practices too. For some of you, this is brand new. And for some of you, um, you have some experience working from home. We worked with a team at Wells Fargo last week where they generally work from home one day a week, but they weren't used to working from home five days a week. And um, you know, we've got teams that are uh, comfortable working from home, but they aren't comfortable working from home or experienced working from home with their school-aged children who now need help with school or with their newly returned college students or with their husband or their wife or their, um, their pup, their two cats, their two dogs, their two small children, their six-year-old, their four-year-old, and their two cats. Um, we have a new way that we're working from home. Carolina, let's share those results. And if you don't mind talking people through them, um, that would be helpful. Um, I actually launched uh, the poll and I haven't received any answers yet. So I was checking. Oh, I've got, you. I've got 60% um, of the room has voted. Okay. So are you that. not seeing that? I can end no. the poll. How about uh, I'll end I, the poll? I can <laughs> end it and then I got, I, you got the results. I've got the results. I'm sharing okay. the results. Sometimes, um, depending on our hosting status, um, we're capable of doing different things in different spaces. So um, we should all be looking at the polling results now so that you can see um, what y'all said. So 0% um, of you said that it's not working for you. Um, and 22% um, say that it's normal for you and you haven't experienced any changes. So you will be the people who will be, um, you know, having the most to share in the chat about best practices because, you know, as a normal, you may have routines and, um, you know, tips and tricks that others don't know. Um, some of you say, some 26% of you say it's okay, you can do this for now. 41%, um, the majority of you say you're adjusting, but you needed to make some changes. I know every single person on my team is adjusting and needed to make some changes. Um, while I've been working from home for 20 years, having my husband and my two college age um, children home and um, a dog, a neighbor's dog that lives here most of the time and a new puppy, um, I had to move my office when they all showed up. So we did a hokey, a quick hokey pokey five days into this work from home thing and moved three rooms worth of furniture in order to make it work better for us. So, you know, you may be experiencing some of that as well. Um, and then 11% um, of you say, I love this and I could do it forever. So uh, that is super exciting and uh, inspiring to see. Um, I am going to close this poll out and we are going to move on. Ken, will you um, launch us into managing your environment. And we're going to do this um, by just sharing with you some of our best practices and some of our tips and tricks. Yeah, so the nice part is the research on this is pretty clear. Um, people who, who take ownership of, who uh, adjust and manipulate their workspace are happier in their workspace. And that, that research was done when we all work from offices. It is equally true when we work from home. So the one thing we're going to encourage you to do is Whatever you've got, and we'll be sharing that, um, whatever you've got, do something that's going to make it a little bit better for you or even just different. And that will have a psychological effect of increasing your satisfaction with it. It may actually increase your productivity. Um, but you know, this is a matter of looking at the things that are around you in your physical space that, um, that affect you. And some of us have the luxury of offices that we've, like I've been upgrading my office for eight years now. 
Um, so I've got it pretty comfortable. Other places, we've had to convert a bedroom to a working space and move in a TV tray and arrange things so it doesn't look weird on camera. Um, so we, we're all in some version of this, especially some people um, have moved recently and are still living out of boxes. So what we're gonna ask you to do um, when we get you into the breakout is, is simply, and this, is, this isn't, we're gonna default you to opting in. We're gonna assume you're gonna opt in in one of a couple ways. One, we're gonna ask you to show us your space, like take your camera, give us a, a, a little mini 30 second tour um, and we'll do it in breakouts. So you're not showing like a hundred people, you're showing like five. Um, but describe the space in which you're working and, uh, and show it off. And if you don't wanna do it on camera, uh, you can talk us through it. Um, but there's something kind of magical about this when you realize that um, when you see something, it's like, oh, that'd be really good to do that. That's pretty clever. Or it's really nice that mine's not the messiest. Um, believe me, yours is not the messiest, whoever you are. Um, but there is something kind of cathartic about doing this activity. So we encourage you to go cameras on and show it off. If not, talk us through it. Um, the so other important thing this does when you do it with colleagues and coworkers is it gives you insight into their situation and their condition. Um, it is one thing to know they're working from home. It is another thing to know that they're, that I have, a, I have a client who has six children. There is no individual quiet working space in their small home. So we need to know that and we have to adjust our schedule so that it fits the flow of his, of his life that he can't escape right now. So, so Ken, will you give yeah. us a little tour, just demonstrate was, the tour? Yeah, if perfect. you'll give us a tour and then I will do um, a different kind of tour so you can kind of see what we're talking about here. Okay, so let's take my camera. So I've got my laptop, got my big monitor I use for grading. Um, there's my printer. There's all the stuff I don't want you to see on camera that's my mess. Um, my various hydration elements. This is where I stash all the stuff I don't want to be on my desk. And there's the box I keep for all the stuff I need to file later. So I've manipulated my environment with technology and um, shelf space to not look totally ugly. Oh, and then behind me is kind of my new version of whiteboard. So mm -hmm. that's the space I've created. And then I'm going to do a different sort of tour um, only because I'm screen sharing with you and I cannot see what you are seeing on my camera. So I'm going to give you a verbal tour. So for those of you who want to be screens on and share your cameras, you can do like Ken just did and share your workspace and talk about what's working for you, what's not. And for those of you who like me are, um, you know, either cameras off or for one reason or another, you want to share your space verbally. I'm just going to tell you one of the things um, that's important for me is to have a, a good lighting. And so, you know, manage your lighting with lamps or down lighting or windows op or, or having curtains that you can open and close. Um, we had to install some curtains in one of my kids' rooms uh, so that he could be on Zoom calls and not, you know, blind everybody behind him or look like he had a halo. Um, making sure that your ergonomics are good. I'm five foot two. I'm very short. Um, well, for some of you, don't, you don't think that's very short, but you know, a lot of you might think that's very short. Um, my feet don't reach the ground. And some of you were posting in the chat about like managing ergonomics. I have a footrest. Before I bought a footrest, I actually bought like, a, like an actual footrest. But for many years, I didn't have a footrest and I was just using a stack of books underneath my desk as, um, or a box underneath my, underneath my desk to keep my feet up on. Um, and having like some task specific space. So I work at my desk for certain tasks and then I have a chair in my office or um, some of you might be in a different part of your, your house for taking calls or for doing different kinds of tasks. So noticing that and notice how much, um, what kind of space you need when you're focused or when you're using privacy. Having an organizational tool like Ken talked about and then having something for, for me, I need something for inspiration. Some of you, that's a view. Some of you, that's using the, um, the virtual background, the virtual green screen on Zoom to like express your personality and put a, a view up. Um, for me, I have this box on my desk of quotes and I pull daily quotes for inspiration. Um, and I also keep, um, I have some random things in my office. I have a baby crib in my office um, because my grandson sleeps here on weekends. 
Um, I have a yoga mat in my office because I try to do yoga and take yoga breaks. I also have a whiteboard with a yoga calendar so I can keep track of, did I do my yoga today or didn't I? Um, and I have a couple of dog beds and, and you know, things, crazy things going on in, um, in my office. So those are some things that you might want to think about um, as you're sharing in your breakouts. We're going to give you five minutes in the breakout. And um, Carolina is setting you up to um, get moved in there. I see them coming back. Welcome back to the main room. We, are, um, we understand that some of you had really great experiences in your breakouts. You were able to connect with each other. You had a great conversation. Some of you were saying your breakouts didn't work and you were maybe in the main room or you were having some connectivity issues. This is one of the issues with us trying to use alternate forms of technology to um, stay connected. Ken's gonna talk about that a little bit later in the presentation. Right now, what we're gonna to jump to is structure and schedule. And Carolina is gonna talk us through um, how we might think about our structure and our schedule more effectively. Yes, yeah, so um, a variety of activities um, it usually leads to higher productivity. So what we think about when we talk about block time is designing a schedule where you have specific time for specific tasks. One suggestion is to uh, lump a certain amount of time for your thinking due. So things like um, things you have to strategize and plan and what needs to be done. Uh, and then some for the talk, you know, think and talk and talk is phone calls and maybe uh, some meetings with your team, um, things that sort of make you be uh, a little more in connection with others. Then there's a time for writing, and that means time for emails or a project where you may need a little bit more quiet, a little bit more uh, lack of distractions, um, a little bit more, you know, deep concentration. And then, the, the, and then there's the move part, which is one that I think this is why Carrie has selected me. I forget the move part. I could sit on my chair and, you know, 12 hours later, I realize that I am in pain and I'm like, oh, that's why I haven't. So scheduling time to move, make sure that your body is getting what it needs. Because um, when you are in office with other people, you may go to other cubicles and other meeting rooms and maybe go to lunch with somebody. Um, but being in, you know, at home, that's a challenge that um, we want to invite you to, um, to undertake, stretch, walk, um, and even take phone calls while you're walking. Nice. Thanks, Carolina. And then I'm also going to invite Hart Logan in here to um, talk about scheduling breaks and uh, an alternate kind of time. Hart is um, actively, you know, is super expert at that and is actively um, challenged with doing that differently in this moment. Yeah, so I live and die by my calendar. Primarily, I do a lot of executive coaching and, of course, trainings like these as well. And because of that, I have an online calendar. So people have access to my calendar, and I don't always have control over it. So one of the things that I have done newly this week was I actually blocked off an hour for lunch every day. It's flexible, actually. I do move it if there's something urgent coming up, but it reminds me, oh, yeah, I have to eat and, by the way, feed my family. Um, I've also blocked off. We're in spring break, break right now, but I am doing some homeschooling in conjunction with our wonderful school. And I've learned that there are certain periods throughout the day where the younger kid needs some help. And so I've blocked off 20 minutes twice a day to accommodate that. Um, and it doesn't mean it's not flexible, but once it's in my calendar, I actually remember that it exists. And the one last little piece I want to add on that is putting in a reminder. Because sometimes you get so involved in what you're doing, we lose our reminders. And even though it's in our calendar, we skip it. So having that pop up saying, oh, yeah, by the way, take a walk is incredibly useful. Excellent. Um, I see a note here in uh, the, the chat from Brianna. And um, she asks, when do you manage to find yourself, what do you do when you find yourself in back-to-back -back meetings most of the day? Mm -hmm. I'm having that day today, um, ironically. And I think a lot of our team is because we've been in a lot of meetings um, together. And um, one of the things that uh, we need to pay attention to is meetings, because of the way our calendars work, default to 60 minutes. Um, it might be helpful to start, and it, this is not just for you, but it's for the people you're meeting with. Start changing that default to 45 minutes, 25 minutes, 
55 minutes so that you have a little bit of a quote unquote passing period or um, time to you know go get some water or take a quick bio break or just check your email real quick between meetings. So um, not defaulting to the 60 minute meeting might be helpful. And if you do like heart and you know, like us, sometimes we're not, we're, we're not in charge of those meetings and they do default to an hour, making sure that you do block yourself out for 15 minute breaks mm -hmm. or 30 minute breaks or 60 minute bre breaks um, so that you can take care of yourself and the people that you live with and now are co-working with. And, so, and Carrie, we did something, I did something before all this happened, which is um, I put in a recurring time uh, for when I was, go when I was working out um, and I, and it was, you know, it was the name of the name of the gym and it said self-care non-negotiable. Hmm. And what was great about that was number one, it staked that time out in my calendar, but the response I got from the team was remarkable. It wasn't, Oh, but we have this thing. It was okay, great. Then, you know, it is so important that you've done that and we know it's not like you to do that. So thank you. Now there are times I go, you know, can you move that? A little earlier, a little later, um, because we've got something that comes up and we look at it. But it, but by by claiming it, by staking it out, uh, and by helping my team become my accountability partner, it's really helped. Well, um, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna use Meredith Silverstein to move us to the next topic. She says she has an app that reminds her to take breaks at repeated scheduled times, appropriately called Time Out for her Mac. And that brings us to technology. Ken is the master of there is an app for that, and he's gonna share some best practices on technology. Um, my yeah. <laughs> so my my sharing here is the like like Carrie said and Meredith. Uh, brought up, there are now lots of apps. There's ones for focus. There's ones for turning off your distractions. There's FaceTime, which is, or excuse me, screen time, which is an interesting reflection at the end of a week um, that, that gives you that kind of feedback. The, the important thing, and I think this goes with your physical space, is treat your technology as your infrastructure. And, um, and so, for example, if you want to have a standing desk, like, and you have a laptop with a couple of boxes, go order the $10 keyboard from Staples. Uh, you know, make it so that you have the infrastructure you need because you're gonna be here a while. Um, invest in not just, a, not just a decent set of headphones, but comfortable headphones. Um, and the other thing that we, that we talk about, and you know, turn off, your, turn off your notifications, give yourself some focus time, um, get some of the little things that you're going to interact with every day. Like, a, you know, if you have, if you have a monitor or, or work will provide a monitor, someone mentioned that their, their company gave them $400 to set up their, their home offices, which is fantastic. Um, you know, the more you can make this, the physical space and the technology space work for you, the better. And because we have so often um, things that don't go right, I used to have a, um, a facilitator's bag for when we were giving keynotes. And I have my remote and my dongles and all that in it. I now have a backup bag. So this is all the tech that I use at my desk that has a backup. So if my phone charger dies, I've got a backup cable. If my camera goes down, I've got a backup. My, I've had a power cord fail on me while giving a class. So I've got a backup power cord here. Now it's taken me about five years to accumulate all these little tchotchkes, um, but I have that as a backup and redundant infrastructure. And we also do things like when we set up a Zoom, we make sure we have the phone in numbers. When we, um, when we use Google Hangouts, we also have a conference call line as a backup. So we set up a lot of redundant technology so we can do what we need to do. Even here, we, if the breakouts didn't work, we had a technique ready for the chat room. If the polling didn't work, we had a way to, to accomplish it in chat. We've set up redundant infrastructure in all of the important elements in terms of hardware and big session software. So that's, my, that's our advice to you is invest the time and energy and a little bit of money into setting up your, your, your hardware and software and then set up some redundancy. Nice, excellent.
And um, you guys are cracking me up in the um, in the chat. Um, evidently, ring lights are all the rage, and uh, they're going to have a run on them on Amazon. Um, <laughs> um, Ken mentioned monitors. Um, you know, like I I had an external monitor on my desk that I used. You know, um, you know, I come and go a lot. I travel a lot, and I would use my external monitor for big projects. I have found now that I'm working from home full time that it has become indispensable, not just a luxury. And uh, you know, so that's something that. You look at what are those things that looked like they were a luxury before, but that are now indispensable in order for you to be most effective, most productive, most engaged in your work. So uh, these are the things. And now we've got Brazilian music. Um, you guys are full of all kinds of great uh, ideas and uh, recommendations. We want to move on to um, how do you stay connected? And um, uh, Carolina, do you want to jump in here? Well, we have um, been doing this for a while, and some of the members of my team have been doing this for a really long time. This is um, working from home for me. It's been about a year or so. And one of the things we do is we have all kinds of fun Slack channels. Some are, you know, super serious, down to business, what happened here, how are we going to handle this very tactically, and others are just to keep things light, things like what's cooking. I think I prompted the development of that one. Um, and because if you're locked up in the house, might as well put something in the oven, I say. Uh, and the other things are like Zoloft. Zoloft is my favorite. And that is where we sort of uh, let go of things that may be uh, depressing us or making us anxious. And, uh, and we have, you know, client care where we talk about our clients and handle that. So um, that is one great tool that we use, but there's lots of them, Microsoft Teams, Many of our clients love that and work really well with that. Uh, there's Skyping, there's texting, uh, there's uh, a happy hour. I've been invited to many dinners and happy hours are all virtual now. It's nice to not commute. Uh, that's something that we do as well in our team and something that we uh, suggest all of you guys do. Uh, and co-working too, let's just hang out for a bit and, and type away and, uh, and keep each other company. Nice. And, um, you know, there are a lot of ways that people are getting innovative and creative about how they're staying connected to their family and friends and coworkers. Uh, the virtual happy hours absolutely taking off. Um, these virtual coffee breaks, whether they're happening on your Microsoft Teams account, on your Slack account, um, by text, or you're just zooming in and hanging out together for, you know, 15, 20 minutes to get that quote unquote water cooler feeling despite the fact that we haven't had water coolers in years, um, or like that break room feeling, you know, like having a virtual break room or these stand-up meetings uh, that, or house parties. So uh, lots of really fun ideas. Um, the, my family, uh, we're, uh, we, we are avid and um, enthusiastic game players. And already, so I have um, four adult children and they're all boys and um, they're engineers and total geeks and, um, we already have a family game night, a virtual family game night that we have now expanded to include others. So um, we used to get together and play uh, a couple different games. Uh, we recently played Codenames Online. Maybe you can post if you're doing any online games or ways of staying connected to your team or your family. Um, I have heard, not safe for work, but um, fun for family and friends, uh, depending on your family, but definitely your friends, is... Um, uh, Cards Against Humanity online. Um, my family, my aunties are getting together on Sunday to play Yahtzee on Zoom. I can't wait to see how this goes. They're all retired and um, completely crazy. I'm not sure much Yahtzee will be happening, but it's an excuse to connect. People are recommending who wants to be a millionaire and Jackbox. So um, keep those recommendations coming in the chat. Uh, that'll help other people out. How do we stay connected when we're connected, when, when we're um when we're online. What are the challenges? Yes. I, 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 one thing, I, I, and I know we want to move to, um, to our next thing, but one thing that we did that served us very well is we created a pecking order of when to use what tech. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, you know, so we know because we used to text group text, which became insane when people got chatty. Um, and so we just created a pecking order. So we start with, you know, it used to be in person, but we start with video. If we can't video, then we do phone call. If we can't phone call, then we would, um, then if it's urgent, we text. If it's not urgent, we slack it. If it, and from there, if, if it's just, hey, I wanted you to know this, um, you can use email then. But we created a pecking order that everyone understood. A text means now. 
email that's means great. whenever, phone call. You know, so it gives us a, a sense of urgency. And the other thing that's happening is as people are shifting their work schedules, they, you need to be explicit about what your response time expectations are as a team. If I send something at, at 9 p.m., am I expecting a response by 11 p.m.? Or is this not that important and it can wait until noon the next day? But having those ground rules as a team ahead of time or specifically in that communication will help people adjust their level of urgency and protect their, their boundaries. Nice. And that does bring us on to boundaries. So now that we're all home, we've got this 24 seven work challenge. Um, and I already noticed it in the, in the chat, people are saying, you know, I was working from home and I realized I never took a lunch break anymore. Or, um, you know, I, I take a five minute break and I go out and I grab a yogurt and I eat at my desk. Um, I am working 12 hours a day instead of uh, my regular eight hours a day. I'm getting up and working in my pajamas all day. I'm working from bed. Uh, so there are some best practices here for um, really making working from home sustainable. And one of those is um, something that you guys have mentioned and that you guys have um, been talking about in the chat, and that's creating a regular morning routine. Get up, do whatever you need to do, get dressed for work. Now, um, you know, I, I work with a lot of professional companies and wear dresses and heels to work very often. That's like my normal work and um, attire. When I work from home, that's not practical. I live in the Midwest on 10 acres and I have to walk a puppy three times a day. Um, I go out and check my chickens in between calls and collect <laughs> eggs. I'm not gonna do that in stilettos and a dress. So you need a new work from home uniform and just figure out what is your new dress for work ritual. Um, and um, one of the important things about um, honoring your boundaries is figuring out what transition rituals you need. We used to have these natural transitions built in. Our commute time was a ritual. Well, you know, driving into work, we could um, focus, we could think, we could listen to podcasts, we could listen to audiobooks, but we could kind of work on ourselves, maybe take some phone calls, whatever it happens to do, whether it was a five minute commute or a two hour commute, you had that time built in. And you had that time built in when you physically left your workplace and, uh, and then could decompress on your way home. That's not automatically built into your work life now. So we need these transition rituals. And uh, so whether it's, you know, making sure you have a specific place that you're working, whether it's your kitchen table or whatever it happens to be, and that you have some way of indicating, okay, work is over. And now I'm moving on to a different part of my life. So for me, I uh, plug in all my equipment, you know, I plug in my computer, I plug in my phone, I turn off my lights, I close my computer, I walk out of my office, and I close the door. That means I'm off work. Um, my transition ritual is now making dinner, um, and I, my family is invited to, to do that transition with me. So we might, you know, or I might just do it by myself, which I find to be most um, useful and kind of helpful for my headspace is just kind of putter around in the kitchen. Um, sometimes, you know, like my husband is like, I'm going to go out and work out. Like he, he closes down his computer and he goes and works out. That's how he wants to end his day and kind of know he's off. Now that doesn't mean I'm not going to necessarily go and grab my computer. I might want to watch Netflix on my computer or masterclass, which is my new obsession. Um, or I might want to go make a personal phone call. I grab my phone and I leave my office and I go do some, some somewhere else in my house, or I grab my computer and I go sit on the sofa or, um, maybe curl up in bed or I grab my iPad and and curl up in bed and read or something like that. So think about those transitions and um, what best practices you have to make that, um, you know, I'm going to out Ken that um, at least twice this week, I got emails from him after midnight. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's what that 24 seven work challenge starts looking at. So, you know, the, what I, what I said to him today, because the work he's producing after midnight is stellar. So um, I said, you know, if you're going to work after midnight, maybe you shouldn't show up before noon. Do you need to flex your hours? <laughs> so that's something we need to think about. Um, moving into <laughs> managing your personal life, Ken. Um. Yeah, just stay up after midnight and everything seems to work out because everyone goes to sleep. Um, <laughs> so um, for those of us who've been working from home for years, uh, you know, it, it was ah, no big deal. And then you realize, oh, wait, my 14-year-old and 16-year-old daughters are now at home and 
appreciate the transition that USC has made. I mean, we put 6,000 courses online in the course of a week and a half. Mm -hmm. um, the girls high school and middle school didn't have that kind of ability to transition. Mm -hmm. So they've gone from, you know, no work to a little bit of work to scheduled check-ins to, so we, my wife and I, who used to, who are used to working side by side with headphones and totally fine. We now have two little ones with no support. Like the nanny's not coming over. Mm -hmm. So this has flipped our schedules. And so what we've done is we ha we've just had to let people know to make some agreements. So when the doors are closed, um, you're welcome to come in if it's really important. Um, doesn't have to be bleeding, but you're, about that level. You're nicer um, than me and Carolina. Carolina, what's your rule? Broken or bleeding. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just want to toss out Kathy Hutton had a great comment in the chat which is she set up a card system green yellow red oh, nice green it's okay to interrupt yellow think twice red only interrupt for emergency and then on yellow and red she puts the time when she'll be available again that's, that's nice brilliant that's really great yeah we, yeah. we've started keeping a little bit of a schedule the only one who's put stuff on there is the younger daughter and the dog <laughs> <laughs> But we're trying to map out times um, to just create some rhythm and um, some expectations. And two things that have become really important is I do confidential work with clients and my wife does um, confidential work in admissions. So I can't know who she's talking to. So every night between dinner and bedtime, we open up our calendars and go, when do you have things that I can't be there for? And where do you want to be? And that way we know how to stay clear of each other and when, and when we can and when we can't. Um, so just that negotiation is great. The other thing that we've done, um, and, and I, see, I see Meredith doing it on, on her camera, which is if you're in the same physical space as your partner, spouse, coworker, colleague, um, just celebrate the distraction. Like when my dog barks, I turn the camera on the dog, like, hey, here she is. She's making all the noise. Um, people will then bring their dogs into their laps. When my daughters come in and they try to sneak in, I'm like, come here, meet the team. Um, we are now in each other's space. And so those kinds of things are going to happen. So just invite them in. It actually will help the rest of your team understand who you're responsible for in real life. And it, it breaks that fourth wall. And again, it creates that connection that, we frankly don't have as much of anymore because we're not in the same physical space. Excellent. Excellent. One of the, one of the little tricks that I have, especially with my dog, cause I don't have any little ones around the house is uh, my dog looks at me going, you're still on the phone. And I look at him and I say, is it time for cuddle time? And I literally go down on the ground and give him a five minute cuddle. I can imagine anybody in our life, would love a dedicated five minute cuddle and it creates a momentary satisfaction for them. Well, hey, Jack, I didn't know you were here. So this is Jack Bennett, one of the partners at Culture Sync and um, with a wonderful comment about distractions. We need to have planned distractions um, and we have a lot of unplanned distractions. We need a plan to plan for them. And um, there are healthy and not so healthy distractions. So, uh, you know, Hart was talking about planning for helping her daughters at school and planning breaks so that she can uh, take care of those, uh, you know, family needs. Um, Jack's talking about those unplanned distractions. Hey, I need a break and the puppy needs a break. Uh, you know, my puppy needs to go potty. I need to jump up and go now or I have an accident to deal with. Um, another unplanned distraction you might want to think about is what do you do when somebody comes to the door with your toilet paper from Amazon or whatever it happens to be that you just ordered <laughs> or your, you know, your delivery you from <laughs> yeah, your delivery of groceries or whatever, you, whatever you have. Um, you know, how are you going to handle that unplanned distraction? I, you know, I remember when I was working from home with little kids, I used to put, um, a note on the door, you know, please don't ring bell, uh, available for signatures after 5 PM, that sort of thing. Uh, you might want to just be capable of communicating and anticipating those un unplanned distractions as well. And then healthy distractions, and uh, we're going to invite you to post about your healthy distractions in the chat. 
Um, this comes out of the research from uh, Jane McGonigal out of Stanford University talks about using certain kinds of distractions and technology to treat anxiety, depression, um, and even PTSD with veterans. Um, they are, their research shows that um, high visual acuity video games are better at treating anxiety and depression than uh, medication. And you know, this is not a comment about whether or not you need medication, we're not qualified. Um, definitely don't stop taking your medication, but maybe add in um, some healthy distractions like Tetris, like um, I, Heart, you've got some favorites you can post in the, uh, in the chat. I personally play in between calls if I kind of need just some white space and to clear my brain and to kind of have some sense of control when I feel like everything's out of control. Um, I will either go do my dishes because um, there's always plenty of dishes in my house because um, I can order things and get things organized or I'll play a uh, spider solitaire as another, you know, quick, easy, planned distraction. Walking the dog is a planned distraction. Playing guitar and cleaning from Jake Johannes. Um, Candy Crush from Carolyn Johnson. Uh, yes to the dishes. I am shocked at how many people um, are in solidarity with me about finding the dishes a peaceful distraction. Lots of people hate the dishes, but um, the more we teach these courses, the more I find my people. So <laughs> we're excited. And when, and when this all comes back to, to whatever the new normal will be, Carrie, you are welcome to come and do our dishes here. <laughs> Nobody here likes it. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> this is super fun. It just, I don't know. It's just like the sense of order. It's a, a really good. All right. So um, we've got a few resources for you. And uh, while Carolina walks us through the resources that you're going to get, um, uh, as part of this course, we're gonna ask you in the chat to share your commitments. What is um, one thing that you'll do to improve your experience of working from home? All right, based on everything you've learned today or you know, some best practices, it looks like everybody's gonna be buying a halo lighter, um, whatever those are. Uh, Carolina, why don't you walk us through here? Yes, so um, as part of this course, you will receive a document um, from our wonderful partners in executive education, uh, and it'll contain a series of suggestions for you to continue practicing and learning uh, this art of working virtually. So there'll be some things for us to read, those of us who enjoy reading, but if you prefer to watch a video, uh, there are a couple of suggestions there. Uh, Jay McGonigal's um, TED Talk is there as well, which uh, we mentioned earlier, and some things to do, some things to practice. Uh, experiential learning is the best way to go. So uh, there's, there's something there. And for those of us who may have a practice of reflection uh, or who may just uh, want to walk away from the daily grind uh, and take a, a minute to, to think about something, uh, we have some topics and some questions to reflect on. Excellent. Thank you, Carolina, for always doing so great of research. Um, Many of you have said, hey, how can we stay in touch? How can we know more? These are our email addresses. You can stay connected to Professor Perlman, to me, to Carolina, and, um, and or to anybody else on our team. Please reach out. We're here to help. And um, if there is anything we can do to support you in uh, working better from home, we absolutely are here to do. If anybody has any questions, we'll stick around. Um, aside from that, we are done for the day. We'll give you that um, five minute passing period. So you can go take that bio break, refill your water, take a breath, um, engage in a healthy distraction. And uh, we have been delighted to see you here today. Ken, any parting words? Um, yeah, first of all, thank you. Thank you guys for giving us a little bit of your time. Hopefully this is done a little bit to make things a little bit better. We have another one coming up, which will go even deeper and further. Um, but what's been thrilling for me and seeing the community that's come from USC and come from Culture Sync, uh, just a real deep appreciation for the partnership that we've forged very quickly. Uh, and the responsiveness has been fantastic and just love the partnership and love the community that we've, we've quickly brought together. That's all going through things. So thank you all very much. And uh, as part of a, the Trojan Network, fight on and uh, again, and, thank you um, all very much. Exec had just posted the link to sign up for the next webinar in the chat. So you can go grab that. Leading virtual teams we're doing next Wednesday, April 8th from 12 to 1 p.m. PST. 
Um, so it'll be me, Ken, and the Culture Sync team uh, here again to lead you through best practices on leading your virtual teams.